you are into music, especially if you're a practicing musician, jazz is, whether you know it or not, what you ultimately strive for because, as Carmine Apice, who played with, among other acts, Vanilla Fudge, said they are masters of their instrument. We have a flautist for the first time in studio <laughs> right now. We have Michael Blazes, who is a UOG faculty member. And, Mike, before we hear your dulcet tones of your voice, if we can <laughs> perhaps hear some, maybe a jazz riff that you can... Oh, you want to you hear this thing, huh? Yeah, perhaps. Oh, okay, I can manage that. Very nice. Oh, Excellent. Everybody on the other side of that scene. Everybody on YouTube is applauding you right now. Thank you hey, so much. Wow, hey, okay. my pleasure. My well, pleasure. Well, and I guess that is the core theme of why we're here because Jazz Appreciation Month. But to truly appreciate any art form, you have to have a, a frame of reference. You have to listen to enough of it to realize, you know, what is what is good jazz as opposed to what is kind of, you know, maybe run of the mill jazz. So, when people begin their journey with jazz, regardless of yes. what level they're on, like how how does one actually begin? I would say go out and buy, uh, buy a couple of albums and some, some very accessible albums. Or some, Nowadays people uh, listen to YouTube before they actually sure. pay for things. But anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, check out some of the 1950s Miles Davis, Miles Davis uh, music. Say. Coltrane. Uh, it's, it's very accessible, uh, very easy on the ear. It's not like some of the, some of the later jazz in the 60s, which became what a lot of people consider dissonant, uh, I think is quite beautiful. But mm. uh, for, for a beginner, I would say start with something like that. Mm. And you find probably that it's very enjoyable. Start becoming familiar with the players who play Miles Davis, of course, some of those older players, Charlie Parker, uh, Dizzy Gillespie. The people who are playing now and are still playing in that style, which by the way we call straight ahead jazz, is uh, Joshua Redman is mm -hmm. a good example, tenor saxophonist and the son of Dewey Redman, who was one of the 1960s avant-garde jazz saxophonists. Mm -hmm. Now, so much of jazz is predicated on the fact that you would improvise and you would just, you know, you would, multiple players would, you know, would feed off each other and just, just create these, and you know, it's not necessarily rehearsed. They have a general idea and they, you just go with the moment and you flow. Absolutely. That is an Absolutely. incredibly hard skill to have for, for any musician, like, especially someone like me. I grew up playing heavy metal, right? which, was all about, <laughs> which was all about technique, but yes, it was it very is. little improvisation. Yes, it is. Yeah, yes. How, how does jazz lend so well to just you know, free-flowing ideas? Well, you have to, you have to study the different, uh, the different styles. You have to listen to an awful lot of musicians and you have to spend a lot of time with your instrument Learning, uh, learning how to play it and what notes are where so that you can hear the idea in your head before you actually play it. When we say improvise, we mean I have an idea up here. I pick up an instrument, I play saxophone and flute. I pick up the instrument and as quickly as I can think of it, uh, it comes out. Now is it truly your brain that's producing this or is it all heart? It is, I would say, <laughs> so what is the split? I'm going to say I'm going to say 90% heart, but first you got to spend 90% of your years building up the technique so that you can get at that part of mm -hmm. it. That's that's the emotional expression. Now, where exactly does jazz originate from? Because, like like I said in the beginning, jazz, jazz for so many people is the ultimate destination because everyone recognizes jazz players as you know they're on a completely different level than most other genres. But but what is the, what is the genesis of jazz? Of course, it started in New Orleans, and it started with, uh, with black musicians mm -hmm. uh, in New Orleans uh, around the turn of the last century, around 1900. And um, there, were, there, were, there was a tradition uh, where they had these jazz bands, and one of the big, big traditions was they would have the jazz musicians play a slow march on the way to a funeral. And then after the funeral had taken place, on the way back, they would play a real up-tempo, swinging kind of thing called Didn't He Ramble. And that was one of the big traditions that started with the New Orleans jazz. Of course, as, um, as the civil rights movement and, and desegregation took place, uh, many of these people moved north. 
and Chicago and New York and even uh, to Los Angeles, California, mm -hmm. um, San Francisco became the centers for for the music as it grew up, as it were. Um, the music that I still find the most exciting started around the 1940s with uh, Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie mm -hmm. at a little club on 42nd Street and the style came to be called bebop and uh, during the 50s Miles Davis came along and he chilled it out it's called cool jazz mm -hmm. and also uh, it developed uh, like an, a, a style called hard bop which was of course grew out of bop and this has since become known best as Straight Ahead. And this is still musicians who are coming up now, young guys, uh, you know, thir teenagers, early 20s, who play just marvelous music. And uh, it's called Straight Ahead, and okay. this is the style we do. Well, I do want to make, make mention of the fact that you are having a faculty recital um, at 3 p.m. Admission is free at the UOG Fine Arts Theater this Sunday on, at Mingyi Lao, the group Straight Ahead. Straight Ahead. They're under your tutelage. Uh, no, that is not quite right. Mm. Uh, Carlos Laguana is a, a professor at UOG. I am a professor at UOG mm. uh, in the music department. We are both uh, jazz people primarily. Well, you both we, teach each other and you both learn from each other. Uh, of course. There you go. And the other people that we will have with us are guests, uh, people that we've worked with over the years, people that are you know, our same generation, with the exception of Miss Julia Rivera, who's a lovely young lady and is our vocalist and will be joining us this Sunday. All right, well, we do have to go, but um, could you take us out, please, with uh, maybe one last okay. riff and we'll head into commercial break. Okay. Once again, Mike Blazes at the University of Guam. Appreciate jazz, everybody. The next generation galaxy has arrived. See it and believe it. The Infinity O displays the most innovative galaxy screen yet. Capture the wider world. Take stunning photos with a 123 degree field of vision. Use your phone to charge other wireless charging devices.